If you're automating attachments in your email, then this video is for you. I'm going to be showing you exactly the steps to build this automation, storing the files in Airtable, and then sending that email out using Zapier. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest, you want to learn more about how we do that, swing by our website. I will include a link below. And don't forget to check out our free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed and running in Airtable quickly and easily. But without further ado, let's just jump into my screen here and talk about today's video topic. So the first part of this, as I mentioned in the intro, is we are going to be sending emails and we want to have some sort of attachments in those emails. This is a question I get every so often from folks who are struggling to get this to work. There's a very specific way to work through this in Airtable and Zapier. So first and foremost, let's just describe this setup. Of course, I'm storing an attachment, and this is one of those things that makes Airtable really unique. Airtable has the ability to store attachments or files directly inside your database. This is one of their key features that I think really sets them apart from a lot of the other relational database softwares out there. Essentially, inside of this attachment field type, as you see here, we can then upload images, documents, or other files. And they can just be, as I said, stored directly in our database. So here you'll see that I have a PNG file. This is our uh, logo that we use on, on YouTube. So that's saved up in here. And then I also have just an image of uh, myself. This one is a JP uh, JPEG file. So that is stored here as well. We're going to use both of these as an example to kind of get them up and running. Now, the other thing that you're going to want in this uh, automation is most likely going to be the email address that you're sending to. Now, in some cases, you might be sending to the same email address every time. So maybe you're sending it to, you know, your boss or something like that, in which case you could just, you know, write that email address into the automation. But if the email address is dynamic, meaning it changes every time you trigger this automation, you're going to want that data to be recorded here with the attachment that you're sending. Okay, so imagine, if you will, maybe this is going to a client, like it's a proposal that's getting sent to a client or something like that. And then from there, the only other part that you'll need is some sort of triggering mechanism. In this case, I'm just using a checkbox. So the idea being that when I check this box, that's going to trigger the automation to send this email to this address with this attachment. So let's really quickly take a look at how we set up that triggering mechanism. So first, we're going to go in here and create a new view. I'm going to add a view. It doesn't necessarily matter what view type. I'll just use the grid view. And let's call this uh, email automation. And what we're going to do is apply a filter so that we are only bringing in those records where we have checked the box for send email. So only, only when we have filtered in send email is checked. Only then will that record be filtered into this view. Therefore, it will be sent out via Zapier. So of course, we have no records in this view at present because we haven't checked any boxes. Let's make that change. And if I go ahead and check this first box here, now when I flip back into that view, I will see that one record. Now, if you have a lot of automations, this is just a quick tip you'll very likely want to lock these views down. This is going to require that you're on the Airtable Pro plan, but by locking it down, you can prevent uh, changes to be made to this view, and therefore, you don't have to worry about your automation accidentally being triggered uh, you know, in times that you don't want it to be. Now let's talk about building that automation. So going into Zapier, we are going to create a Zap. So we can just hit Make a Zap here. The trigger mechanism is Airtable. And we just built that specific view. So we're looking for a new record in that particular view. Let's go ahead and continue from here. Now we need to just link to our proper Airtable account. If you have multiple, make sure you're getting to the right one. And then to the base. Now, in this case, uh, this base was called attachment something. There it is, send attachments. So that's the base we're looking for. Now, if you have multiple tables, you'll need to make sure to map to the proper table here. And then, of course, map to the proper view, in this case, the email automation view. From there, we can go ahead and continue, and we're going to bring in a sample of data. So let's go ahead and test the trigger out. And you'll see here that there is a lot of data here. Now, let me flip 
pause real quick and flip back to my database. There's not a whole lot of data that we're collecting here. It's and you know whatever the name of this record is, the attachment, the email, and then the send email checkbox. But you'll see that we've got a lot of data coming in here. And in fact, all of this, or the majority of what you see here, is all part of that attachment. So you'll notice that attachments colon has all of this data right here, all the way till right before we get to email. These are all different data points that came with that attachment. And so it can be sometimes difficult to figure out what you need to use when you're sending that email. All right, here's the email address. Here's the logo. That was the name that we gave this particular one. Send email is checked. Of course, we have some metadata as well. In this case, the record ID and the created time of that record. All right, so moving on from there, we're gonna hit continue. And now we're in the second step. So again, the first step here was building the trigger. That is, we check that box. That tells Airtable, hey, or rather that tells Zapier, hey, this is, get, this is ready to be sent. Now let's go ahead and write that email. In this case, I'm gonna use Gmail to send that. And you can choose the action, which is gonna be send the email. Let's go ahead and continue from here. Now link to the proper Gmail account if you have multiple. And this is where we're gonna bring in that to address. So you see that when I click here, it will pull down and this is the data that we're getting from Airtable. In this case, I wanna use that email. So that's the email address inside of Airtable. Again, this is where we would enter that email address so that it sends dynamically based on the person we wanna to send to. And of course we need to you know, have a from here. And if we wanted to put a from name, of course this is optional. The only other required parts are the subject and the body. So in the subject here, let's say uh, email attachment, automation. And we can either choose plain or HTML here. Uh, I'll just do plain for this example. And let's just type a quick email. Hi, here's, whoops, here's the attachment I promised. All right, now, the last part here is coming into the attachment. So let's go ahead and select here. And this is the trickiest part. We need to make sure that we get the right part of data from Airtable. So we need to click on the show all options here. And let's go ahead and look at all these different options that we have. The one that we're looking for is actually the URL and it will say full URL right here. Now this seems a little odd, uh, to be clicking on the URL. And a lot of times this is where the problem arises. People are actually trying to send the file itself, which you don't really have the proper access to. But this is a public URL and you can therefore share that. So let's go ahead and give this a test. In this case, it's gonna be sending this email to my email so I can test it. And you see that the test got the green light up here. It says a test email was just sent to Gmail. And if I refresh my Gmail, hopefully that pops in within just a moment. All right, so that email just came in and you'll notice that it got sent to the uh, to address that we had. It, and here is the you know quick text and also the subject line that I entered, the email attachment automation. But most importantly is that file. So that file is available here and it can be downloaded by this person or of course shared to Drive because I'm using G Suite. Let's go ahead and now test this automation from start to finish using that other record that we have in our Airtable database. So I've now turned this automation on. Let's go ahead and give it a name as well. I'll call this the attachment automation. And I can flip back out here and this is that. Now this will take one to five minutes depending on your Zapier plan once the triggering event has occurred. So back in our Airtable database, we can go ahead and check that box. Normally I would wait the one to five minutes, but in the sake of time, let's go ahead and run this manually. So we should find a new record, which we do find, there it is. And it just sent that email successfully. Let's go ahead and flip back into our uh, email account and see if it was received appropriately. There it is, just refreshed. And there is the uh, the attachment that came with that second record. So that's the attachment we were looking for or expecting to receive. And sure enough, that is what we got. We can pop it open and see that it's you know, in its entirety or of course download it as well. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, 
we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.